Hello, hello, and hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me in the first of the ASM3D C560XL tutorials for the X-Plane Flight Simulator. It's so good to have you aboard today. Welcome. Today I'm using our New Zealand country-themed silver fern livery. What does country-themed mean? For that, please view our C560XL outside walkabout for that explanation. Now this is the first of two checklist focus tutorials. In this one, we will assume that you have loaded the aircraft in a working state. So as you can see, I'm positioned by the simulator at the end of the runway for takeoff. Things are completely powered up, everything's running, all the systems are running and operating normally. Now the next tutorial is also about checklists, but we access them from a cold and dark state. So, two slightly different scenarios, but both checklist related. I'm going to pause the sim now, just so that we don't burn fuel and cause a problem for other aircraft sitting on the runway. And let's chat about the aircraft's 100% real world replicated checklists. Okay, so the first thing to remember about this aircraft, everything has a purpose and a procedure. Now I'm sure you will agree that even the most experienced pilots follow procedures and that they are very methodical in their approach to piloting aircraft. They just don't jump in and start flipping things around. Please do not do that because it's likely that you will bump into something not working as you think it should and you will then think there are bugs and in fact it's probably not working because some procedure was missed for it to operate correctly. Everyone's calling for more realism and since this aircraft is built to be 95% real and is 99% bug free, it should therefore be operated using its 100% real world replicated checklist. And that aligns with real pilot behavior too by the way. Now in a fully working cockpit, getting to the checklist is very simple. What you do is click the norm button on the MFD, norm for normal, to open the checklists. The emergency checklists are not included, but every system failure is modeled and how to manage those failures are covered in later tutorials. Failure management procedures are also available on the on-demand online POH. Just use page search to find topics. And we talked more about the POH and our rationale behind the design in our first View Me tutorial. All right, so pop it out and now it can be resized and moved around. Also, the pop out remembers its size and position the next time it is open. Now the checklists cover every flight phase. Each checklist contains a 100% replica of the real 560XL checklists and using them is vital to the aircraft's smooth, bug-free, consistent, predictable operation. Now to open any phase, this lower half contents page must first be blank. Please remember that. And so since we are ready for takeoff, I'll open the takeoff checklist. And I do this by placing the cursor over the topic and scrolling, not clicking, scrolling the topic. Scrolling kind of feels like a page flip. Clicking is more like a computerese thing. Wait, computerese, is that even a word? Anyway. Scroll, don't click, okay? Important to remember this, folks. Now, as I continue to scroll, I can advance pages. Now, you may be looking at this and think, oh wait, I don't see a way to check off tasks. And you'd be correct, that is not a bug, not something we forgot or did not know how to do. For context, and this is by design, and in keeping with our goal to be realistic as possible, real checklists can't be checked off. Yes, 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 I understand. A pilot may add an aftermarket tab or a device in a cockpit to hold it and be able to do that on the device, but add-on devices are not provided by Cessna when they deliver the aircraft like we have delivered the aircraft to you. So therefore, you may elect to add your own plugins for equivalency, but the choice to add something to your cockpit experience aftermarket is yours to make. 
We wanted to keep the checklist experience real and to stay true to our 95% authenticity goals. On the takeoff checklist, we now see that I am on the first of two pages in this checklist. And if we scroll to them, we can get back to the blank lower half. With this area now blank, we can then open one of the other 14 checklists and then get access to a total of 23 content pages across all the checklists. But just to repeat, remember to scroll through all the pages of an open flight phase before you can open another phase. So there you go. 100% replicated real world working checklists. You should use them a lot to be sure you are setting up and operating the aircraft realistically. But also, train to be methodical like all real pilots are. If something does not work as you expect it to, either because that's how other aircraft do things or that you're not used to following checklists, then please simply look up the relevant flight phase, follow the procedure, and then it's going to be almost certain that you will get the aircraft to work as it is designed to be operated. Real pilots use checklists always, no matter how many hours or experience they have. So if you want realism, then you should follow that best practice of following these checklists too. Okay, throttle up, brakes off, here we go. I'm going flying, toodle pip, until next time, bye.